Good morning. Let me see here. There we go. Hi, good morning. Um, if you're joining me for the first time, welcome. My name's Carrie, and I'm the founder of The Spinning Hand. And we used to do coffee with Carrie pretty regularly, and it's time to start it up again. I miss you. So uh, we're going to start today. It's July 8th. I'm going to talk about self-care, which is such a buzzword. <laughs> so I'm here to talk to you today about extreme self-care uh, beyond knitting. So if you uh, have followed me for a minute, you know that knitting is like everything to me. Um, and I'm sure you love it as well. We are a yarny community here. We love yarn. We love luxury, beautiful yarn, the nicest that we can afford, uh, whatever that means to each of us. And uh, just knitting, it's, you know, it's soul food, honestly. Um, it, so anyway, extreme self-care. Um, whenever I whenever I read or see something about self-care um, on social media, it's usually because someone's trying to sell me something. <laughs> so uh, just so you know, I'm not selling you anything um, today. <laughs> Give me time. Um, all right, I just wanna make sure I can see the comments. So if you're joining me live, um, go ahead and comment live and good morning. And uh, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and comment replay and I'm happy to see you. So um, yeah, so we have two people live today. Go ahead and, and uh, post a comment and let me know uh, who's here today. So talking about self-care, um, candles and face masks and manicures are nice, but <laughs> um, I'm always really sensitive to how men and women are treated differently in advertising. And when women are, are told to take good care of ourselves, it's always, almost always to uh, improve our physical appearance. <laughs> like you're not taking care of yourself if you're not like, I don't know, if you don't have this new razor, <laughs> if you don't have this new hair removal tool. So um, <laughs> that's not, Hey, Michelle, good morning. Um, tell us where you're watching from. It's, it's really nice to meet you. Um, and I, I won't, I promise not to ask you, uh, you know, too many questions or anything. Um, but this is actually my first live on YouTube. So, ah, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> um, so yeah, talking about self-care and, and how men, are marketed to and women are marketed to. Good morning, Jess. Um, you know, just imagine Derby, New York. Nice. I don't know where Derby is. Um, I'm from Rochester, New York, uh, upstate. So, you know, you would never say to a man like, oh, you need to like pamper yourself. And uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe nowadays we're, we're getting more gender equality and maybe the men are being sold to as well. Like, you know, um, buy this beard shaving kit. I don't know. <laughs> so, and that's a way to take care of yourself. Um, but honestly, like when I think of men going off and taking care of themselves, they're doing something that they love. Like they are maybe, and this is so like gender um, biased. So forgive me. Um, but I think of like, I think of the guys uh, going to play poker. I think of, um, all right, well, this is my dad, <laughs> right? I think he, he bowled, he played softball. Um, I know my dad is not like the only male example I can think of, but, um, but you know, they just, they do things that they love. And I think for women, that is exactly the same thing. So not just talking about knitting um, as far as doing what you love, it can be gardening. It can be taking care of uh, playing with your pets. You know, um, yeah, Jess says watching the game with friends. Exactly. Connect, good morning. And Michelle, you're just outside of Buffalo. Awesome. Awesome. Um, 
so today I wanted to give you, um, you know, sort of like a fresh perspective. Okay, well, I don't know how fresh it is. It's my perspective on what extreme, taking extremely good care of yourself can look like. Um, so number one is to learn something new. Um, number two is to turn off the phone and I'll explain each of these briefly. And number three is to understand your boundaries. So understanding them first, sometimes setting them comes later, but number one, to understand them. So um, I wanted to start with learn something new. Uh, it could be as simple as a knitting stitch, right? Going to your stitch dictionary and trying something new. Um, I tried brioche, two color brioche. Uh, the first time I tried it, I couldn't figure it out. But there's just something about like, not failing, but making mistakes and not being able to do something correctly at first. Um, that's really good for your brain. <laughs> you know, having that beginner's mind and also just saying like, oh, I'm just going to try it. You know, I'm just going to give it a try. Um, so I always think of Barbara Walker when I think of learning something new. And when I bought my copy of, um, here, you don't need to read this. There we go. When I bought my copy of her treasury of knitting patterns, um, it came with, this is crazy. Look at this. Um, a Morris author, this is Morris, New Jersey, works knitting patterns into original designs. And it's so funny the way that they print the G's in this newspaper. They look like Q's to me, but what do I know? So this is an interview with Barbara Walker. She is a New Jersey, um, she was a New Jersey resident. And um, she talks about how she taught herself to knit as an adult. And um, so she, she was looking for, this is in 1965. She was looking for um, different knitting patterns, an encyclopedia of knitting patterns. She couldn't find any. So she decided to create her own. Um, and it says, collecting patterns from knitting magazines, old English volumes, and neighbors' memories of old family stitches, she adapted and worked patterns into original designs. Every pattern was tested and her learning swatch added to her sample box dictionary. After a mere two and a half years and numerous sweaters, dresses, skirts, coats, and knitted ski pants, which I would love to see, her book appeared in local bookstores. Here's the part that I found really interesting. She said, if you devote yourself to the intensive study of any subject for two or three years, inevitably you learn a great deal about that subject. Now, that's, that might seem obvious, but then she said, after all, a whole college education covers only four years. And I thought, isn't that interesting? Like we can give ourselves a master's degree in a variety of topics um, just by just by learning something new every, you know, every day, even if it's just a little something. And of course it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to do with knitting. Like I find learning new factoids so interesting and even more so if I can share them with somebody else who may not want to know what I've learned, but it makes me happy. Um, and then Jessica says, practice makes progress. Learn that from my son's kindergarten teacher. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, so then when I picked up two color brioche again, I, and it was years later, it was like at least two years later, I figured it out. So it just, you know, so it just takes a little time and it's okay to like leave something and come back to it. Um, so that's, that's my little rant about learning something new. And then my second, okay. <laughs> I'm sure everyone has a variety of um, levels of how much they use their phone each day. And I don't know if this is true for Android phones, but I do have an Apple phone, an iPhone. I actually have two. <laughs> I have a fancy one that I use for video and photos. And then I have a really old one that, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's really old. So every week, each phone tells me how many hours I spent 
that week on my phone. And it is uh, kind of mind boggling, mind blowing and embarrassing. Um, and let's just say I could get a part-time job easily <laughs> in those hours. Now, granted, there are drips and drabs and it's like it's usually in the morning when I wake up and then before I go to bed at night. But that affects my sleep. So I find when I'm playing games on my phone before I go to bed, I have trouble going to sleep and then it, it just ruins everything else. So uh, this is a message to myself more than, you know, or equal to as a message to you just to turn off the phone. And so I think the number one hack that I'm going to do is to charge it in another room before I go to bed. And, um, and I, by it, I mean the one that I play the games on, which is the newer one. <laughs> and actually like read a book um, or do something analog, hello, knitting, before I go to bed, um, just so that my brain can kind of turn off. Um, but I think that one simple thing in to just like charge it in the other room and not have it, because I'll pick it up in the middle of the night, will just really make an improvement in so many other areas of life. Um, so if you have trouble as I do um, with like too much phone time, I'd really be interested in knowing that. Um, and also I'd like to know what your particular rabbit hole is. So I had brunch um, the other day with a friend of mine. He's a young, uh, just starting his career. He's, he's an analyst at Goldman Sachs and his thing is YouTube videos. So he doesn't do social media, but he will like just watch all these YouTube videos and go down a rabbit hole. Um, I find TikTok is extremely addictive as well. And TikTok seems to be kind of aware of that, actually. Lately, they've been giving, um, you know, advice like, hey, you might want to limit your time. <laughs> you know you watch too many TikTok videos when. Um, so, yeah, if if this is an issue for you, I'd, I'd really be interested in knowing that. Um, or if you have broken a screen addiction, I'd really be interested in knowing that, too. Um, okay. So that's my turn off the phone, not rant, but discussion. And number three is understand your boundaries. So um, this came to mind, an example of, of how to take extremely good care of yourself came to mind when I was visiting my mom up in Rochester very recently. And every Sunday there is a flea market. And my son loves to sell clothing, vintage clothing, and he wanted to do the flea market. So he did one on a Sunday, and then we stayed with my mom the whole week, and then we did another one on the next Sunday. And there's so much work, as you can imagine, in like, <laughs> we rented a U-Haul trailer, and we put a hitch on my car, which is a mini, by the way, so it's pretty hilarious to see my little engine that could, lugging a trailer of clothing, but... I digress. Um, we we had two tents and we had 10 or 12 clothing racks, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items of clothing and so on and so forth. Good morning, Jerry. It's so good to see you. So good to see you here on, on Facebook. And then Michelle is joining us on YouTube. Lovely. So yeah. So anyway, it was a ton of work and I was happy to do it. Um, but also, you know, I wasn't able to do as many yarny things as I'd like to do. Uh, I wasn't building my business the week that I was helping my son. And I had, those of you who get my email, um, my emails know that I helped my mom with her knee replacement earlier this year. And so that was a week that I spent in Rochester helping her. And I was so happy to do it. The thing is, mom is such a bionic woman that she decided to get her second knee done. <laughs> and she just got it done like two weeks ago, two weeks ago today. And she wanted me to come back and help her uh, again. And I have to tell you at the end of this week, helping my son, I was just like, I can't do it. I cannot come back again the same month 
and help mom again. And I was really stressed about it because I thought she was going to be so angry with me or at least almost worse, disappointed, you know, like really disappointed. Maybe she would cry. And I just thought, uh, I, I couldn't even talk to her about it in person because I was a big wimp. And so my son and I got in the car to drive back to New Jersey and I just texted my mother and I said, um, you know, I'm really kind of stressing out about this and I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow, you know, for sure. But I don't know if I can come back so soon and help you. My mother called me and said, oh, I'll just have my sister do it. Your Aunt Lynn. She could, you know, she offered to help. I'll, you know, She goes, you're my first choice, but my sister can help. And just like that, that it was done. <laughs> There were no tears. There was no argument. So I was, I was really relieved. And I found this again and again, that I would say to my therapist, um, here's a problem X, Y, Z that I'm having with someone else. My therapist would say, have you told this person that there's a problem? And I would say, I could never say that there's a problem. And then I try it and there's a change. It, it's just, uh, now I tend to be very honest and straightforward, but for those of us who have trouble and everyone has trouble saying what they really think, um, just a little bit of honesty, even if it's painful in the moment can just be like, oh, <laughs> so this might be a weird tangential thing to talk about when it comes to self-care, but I just think that understanding your boundaries, knowing when enough is enough, because we tend to be givers. We have a lot of nurses in this community. We have a whole lot of mamas. Um, we have a whole lot of daughters and a few sons in this community. And we take care of other people like all the time. So, um, so taking care of ourselves is just a way to like refill the well, replenish the source energy that we need. And uh, by the way, we can do Knitting actually has to do with all of them. Yeah. Being a sandwich generation. Yeah. Jess, you're like the definition of sandwich filling. You're a delicious sandwich filling. <laughs> Think of your favorite sandwich filling and that's Jess. <laughs> so um, that, that was all I had for today, but I just wanted to um, just wanted to let you know that um, I'm thinking about you um, every morning when I'm looking at my phone and I am trying to limit my phone time. I, I take a look at the New York Times daily newsletter and, you know, there's a lot going on. Um, today, James Kahn passed away. I, I found out. I don't think he passed away today, but James Kahn passed and um, the prime minister of Japan was shot. And, you know, not to mention all the things that are going on. I mean, we could go on and on. And so rather than having it be selfish to step aside and like take care of ourselves, it's really the best way that we can power through and fight, fight the good fight. Um, and, you know, and I think that being like kind, self-aware, happy people is, is like one of the most, it is the most powerful tool that we have um, to, to change whatever needs changing and to accept whatever we can't change. So yeah, Jerry says there's too much going on and yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, I think just to bring it full circle before I say um, goodbye and happy weekend, um, you know, when, it, when I first, when I first got on, I talked about like, the difference in marketing to men and women, just broad strokes here, is that I feel like when women are told to take care of themselves, it's like so that we can retreat and hide from what's going on in the world. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying book yourself into a spa and and just leave for a week, although that sounds wonderful. And if you have the means, do it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying to run away from the too much going on, but rather to like restore what you need inside 
so that you can face the day with grace and ease and love. Um, because truly, I truly believe um, that, that that will just conquer everything. Um, and I know that sounds really naive, but I really believe it. Um, I kind of have to, to get through the day. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that. So thank you. This has been so fun. Um, I'll get better at, you know, at having more of a conversation with you in the chat. Um, I would love to have some of you like, um, actually join me. So I'm, I'm broadcasting from StreamYard so I can have guests and, uh, you know, and actually Jess is going to come on with me in a couple weeks and we're going to talk knit, knitwear design. And, um, I'm really putting her through her paces with this one pattern that I'm sending out in July. And so hopefully Jess, you won't be too angry with me. <laughs> it's a happy challenge, you know, and we can't knitting knitting design can't always be so straightforward. So Jerry, you don't think that you can handle um, being on screen? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you would be so much fun, but whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. And your hubby is retiring in October. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot. That <laughs> Um, that's a, that's a completely different like situation for you now. Right. Cause if he's been out of the house, um, yeah. And now he's going to have a lot of time. So he might, he might be pressuring you to retire. Just saying. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And, uh, yeah. If, oh, by the way, you know, if you ever want to reach out and say hello, um, please email me at the spinning hand at gmail.com. Um, that's my personal email and, uh, and I'll respond to you. So good. Have a great weekend and take good care of ourselves, right? All right. Take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.